This is the introduction to live streaming Google Slides audience questions. You'll notice a red rectangle bottom left, which is introduction. As this video progresses, the red bars get bigger. So the biggest thing I can stress here is just because I'm using a an example about schools and classes, this could be used for absolutely anything. So in this introduction, what I'm saying is that if we look at uh, something in my own educational experience as a teacher, I taught in a couple of schools. Class 3 up here on the top left, class 3 on another school here are not connected because they're about seven miles away. So what I'm going to show you is how to produce these steps and I'm going to repeat again not just education, not just schools, anything whatsoever. Choosing a corporate uniform, anything you like, can be used and live streamed over the web or into the same room. So stepping back from that in this introduction to finish with it, we can see that if class or room, shall we say, was in the UK and we've got another room or a class in America, and I've dotted these number threes just to say they're all, let's say, seven, eight-year-olds in school and they all want to learn at the same time, we can live stream Google Slides with this URL, A1B1 or A1B2 is just a, a made up thing about audience questions or voting. So let's stop here and go to step one, which is knowing that you are to produce a live YouTube stream which is in the aspect ratio of 16 by 9. It looks like this. If you have not set up your live streaming dashboard, then go to live underscore dashboard and look up for the setup encoding, add stream, optional features and eventually going live. In step two, although it looks quite simplistic, it's the one that you can spend the most amount of time on because you are designing your scene setups. I've included on the blog a couple of links, not only to Wikipedia, but also about how we can look at exactly using this slide. Now, I'm going to explain it, and that is that the black area is 16 by 9. All the colors are made up of yellow widescreen format, pink which is 4x3 old school TVs, monitors, red which is 16x9 which is the same as the black but it's a little bit smaller and green is a standard square. You might have seen of the, that on uh, Instagram photos, stuff like that, profile pictures. But the point of it is, is really think about your designs because it's so important that you start with a blank canvas and you move forward from there knowing that anything, anything at all is possible. Step three looks at Google Slides and also on design. So you can see that this image here, I've made three Google Slides. One of them is 16 by nine, one of them is four by three, and another is square. Now linking back, and I'll show you where the link is from this folder. When you open it, it looks like, oh, it looks like this. So what you've got in here is some images and some slides that I've made. So for example here is the one that is the slideshow. It's just one page but it's four by three in ratio. You can have a mess around yourself. Here is the square one over here and over here here is the 16 by 9. So going back what we've got here um, from step three is to say this is, this is about Google Slides. You've got different aspect ratios that you wish to experiment with or use one that you must use because that is say your industry or education standard. And then after that you can see how they work. Now what I've also done is when you open up the slideshow I've made sure that there is a blackboard around here leaving enough bottom control to display the advanced slide, presenter view and the exit button along with the laser pointer. Now what I've also said that down here and uh, there's a link down the bottom here that says when you have a look you will also open up another URL in Google Slides of course with Chrome with me and that looks like this so you can advance your slides see how much time you are elapsing and also see the questions as they appear. Remember this is just living in the Google Slides document at the moment. It's not living anywhere else apart from the URL which is slides forward slash four digits uh, for codes there. So what we've done is we've got ready for Google Slides and we have got an understanding of where we want to go. In step five, which thankfully for you is the last step, is putting it all together. So just as a reminder that OBS stands for Open Broadcast Software and from that I have produced a 
guide in terms of uh, my videos on a playlist of how to live stream using OBS. Now, if you're up to that standard, what we can do is open up OBS. What it looks like is that you can create and curate your design for the live stream itself. Now, I've used something extremely simplistic, and that's made up of a text at the top left. I put a slide of the contents of the book, uh, shall we say, and also on the right hand side, you can see I've still left it on this 4x3 in green here to say that is where my Google slide presentation with the live questions URL is coming into OBS. Now, if this were a live OBS studio interface, you would hit these two buttons. You could either hit start streaming where you've logged into YouTube already with a stream key, an encoder key, and you go live to private, public or unlisted depending on how you wish to set it up. If you just wanted to do a local screen recording you could hit start recording but in this example of course you won't be streaming that URL to anywhere else. So just to repeat um, from the blog's point of view we've got start the encoder which is OBS on step 5. We can add some components, you can read about them here start streaming which I've said and then the final part I just want to go back is about uh, scale to finish this and that is really simple in that if I go right up to the top of here and just click is this is why I've included this lead slide which I made this morning and that is if these three classrooms for an example, sorry, this, this three and three were classrooms literally through another wall we could use OBS to get through that wall with Google Slides. If that classroom wanted to share a topic or a lesson, it could be across the Atlantic, it could be on the other side of Russia, it could be anywhere on the planet. So hopefully, if you can see some value in this, depending on what you're using, we can look at the old school model of a school and then update it using Live at YouTube.